Hi, I'm Bishop Calvo of the Diocese of Reno. You know, this Holy Week is very different. It's certainly different for me as a bishop and a priest. It's something I haven't done in all the time I've been ordained a priest, which is almost 43 years now. And it's different, but it's also a challenge, and it's calling us to deepen our faith and to walk with the Lord, with Jesus, at this time we celebrate his passion, death, and resurrection. And we could do this because we are going through something inside ourselves as well. Now, if you follow the gospel, especially the passion, the story of the passion, we see what happened. Now, yesterday was, was uh, Sunday was Palm Sunday. We heard about the cheering crowds welcoming him in as he made his entrance into Jerusalem. And what happens is, soon those crowds disappear. His disciples fall away. The intimate group of apostles abandon him. And then, as he is arrested, as he is then given a cross, slowly he is stripped of the dignity of his humanity. He's stripped of his clothes as he's nailed upon a cross. And even upon the cross, he is stripped of something so vital to him. And that is the sense of closeness to God the Father. And so we hear in the Passion, one of the last words of Jesus is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's now something where all of that feeling of support and consolation is taken away from me, stripped down to just his bare love of God the Father and his obedience to God the Father, and he's fulfilling his destiny, the mission for which the Father has sent him to accomplish with us. That's what's happening. And in many ways, our journey is a little, it's not as momentous or as heavy as that, but we are going through something like that. And you know, the saints, the great saints especially, went through something similar to the experience of Jesus. It's not for us. I wouldn't want to go through this. But the great saints who had great spiritual maturity went through this experience. And one I could think of, there's many, but one I could think of is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. St. Teresa of Calcutta, the one who cared for the poorest of the poor in our world. And everybody knew it. <clears throat> when the process for her canonization was about, they read her spiritual journal. And one of the things they found later on in life is she began to write about her sense of pain because she no longer felt that closeness to Jesus, the consolation she had. And some people thought that, oh my God, she doubted. Well, what's, what's this whole thing? How could she be a saint? And her spiritual director said, no, this is a sign of the depth of her spirituality. She stripped away of all that consolation. And what was left was a bare love and faith in Jesus Christ. And the love she continued to show in her love for the poorest of the poor. That's a great maturity that many of us are not called to do, but this led work this Holy Week, we're called to do something similar, and that is we don't have the same kind of consolation. We mass together. We don't have communion. All those things that helped us along our journey. And as all of this is coming out, we're now called and tested to renew in the depth of our hearts our love and faith in Jesus Christ. That's what we're challenged to do. It's not impossible for us. The great saints knew this, and it's not that that difficult in many ways, because we have one another we can pray. But that's the journey. That's the journey you're invited to in this Holy Week as we commemorate the passion, death of Jesus Christ, and also the life that comes to us as we celebrate at Easter. Now, today I'd just like to pray with you, and I want to use a prayer that I found very moving in watching the Orbi at Orbi, that prayer service that Pope Francis had about a week or so ago. And I found it very moving, they had adoration. And during adoration, they prayed the litany of supplication. And I'd like to pray that with you now as we are praying and preparing for the great feast of our church. And if you respond along with uh, people who are here with me, who are socially distant, by the way, uh, we like to pray with you. So, we believe in you, O Lord, only begotten Son of the Father, Descended from heaven for our salvation. We believe in you, O Lord. Heavenly Physician, who bowed down over our misery. We believe in you, O Lord. Lamb who was slain, who offer yourself to rescue us from evil. 
We believe in you, O Lord. Good Shepherd, who give your life for the flock which you love. We believe in you, O Lord. Living bread and medicine for immortality, who give us eternal life. We believe in you, O Lord. Deliver us, O Lord, from the power of Satan and the seductions of the world. Deliver us, O Lord. From the pride and presumption of being able to do anything without you. Deliver us, O Lord. From the deceptions of fear and anxiety. Deliver us, O Lord. From unbelief and desperation. Deliver us, O Lord. From hardness of heart and the incapacity to love. Deliver us, O Lord. Save us, O Lord, from every evil that afflicts humanity. Save us, O Lord. From hunger, from famine, and from egoism. Save us, O Lord. From illnesses, epidemics, and the fear of our brothers and sisters. Save us, O Lord. From devastating madness, from ruthless interests, and from violence. Save us, O Lord. From being deceived from false information and the manipulation of consciences. Save us, O Lord. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect your church which crosses the desert. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect humanity, terrified by fear and anguish. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect the sick and the dying, oppressed by loneliness. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect doctors and health care providers, exhausted by the difficulties they are facing. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect politicians and decision makers who bear the weight of having to make decisions. Comfort us, O Lord. Grant us your spirit, O Lord. In the hour of trial and from confusion, grant us your spirit, O Lord. In temptation and in our fragility, grant us your spirit, O Lord. In battle against evil and sin, grant us your spirit, O Lord. In the search for what is truly good and true joy, grant us your spirit, O Lord. In the decision to remain in you and in your friendship, grant us your spirit, O Lord. Open us to hope, O Lord. Should sin oppress us? Open us to hope, O Lord. Should hatred close our hearts? Open us to hope, O Lord. Should sorrow visit us? Open us to hope, O Lord. Should indifference cause us anguish? Open us to hope, O Lord. Should death overwhelm us? Open us to hope, O Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Lady of the Snows, pray for us. Stay safe, and let's pray for one another.